after shows. Well, you know, Canada is my second home. I live in Washington State. We're neighbors. <laughs> um, and I've enjoyed, I've, I've had a chance to teach and, and lecture at many of the different universities and colleges in Canada. Uh, uh, Ruth, wherever you are, I want to thank you this morning for sharing all the benefits that you've experienced and have heard from about 70,000 people in your downline. And you only started a couple of years ago. And uh, she's from Calgary, and I used to come there regularly and uh, talk about nutrition behavior at Mount Royal College. So uh, I, I really appreciate that opportunity. You know, I'd like to take a moment. We're going to go through a lot of research, but the same question comes up. How did I get involved with SIE? I've been studying nutrition, nutraceuticals, functional foods, for probably, I guess, since 1968. And uh, that was the year in which I was looking at how vitamin C and antioxidants can help heroin addicts in Harlem and New York, in New York City. It's a terrible addiction where people prostitute, sell drugs, and steal and rob all the time to support it. A typical New York um, addict was spending about $2,000 a day on their addiction. And this is 1968, and that's 68 money. So you can imagine what that, that's like $5,000 a day they would have to come up with to shoot up, feel high, and, and survive that day. So they would go into detox, and they would go through what we called cold turkey, where for days and days they would sweat and vomit, and they couldn't sleep, and they had back aches and severe stomach pains. It was an unbelievable experience to watch. And I went to a junior high school in New York City where half of my students, my peers, used heroin. So you can imagine the environment I grew in, and so I thought the first chance I had to learn science and to figure out how can you help people like that, I would do that. And so I did research in Harlem while I was also studying at the City University of New York that summer. I was also a student at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. And I came across this research, and no one believed, no one believed that this could help heroin addicts. But I found some fundamental information that vitamin C could occupy uh, what we call opioid receptor sites. That means it could interfere with the effect of vitamin C, this antioxidant. So I started giving them enormous amounts of vitamin C, which people thought would kill them. All the textbooks said that the amount of vitamin C I would give them would not only give them severe diarrhea, it would probably kill them. But I got permission to continue this work, and it was a way to develop a profound safe, natural way to help heroin addicts withdraw with no withdrawal symptoms whatsoever. And this was published. Now that, that attracted the attention of Dr. Linus Pauling, the Nobel laureate, who won the two Nobel Prizes in Chemistry and Peace independently. A brilliant scientist. By the way, he memorized the Encyclopedia Britannica when he was 12 years old. Brilliant man. And he called me, he heard about this research, and he said, Alex, keep studying these antioxidants. And in 1995, I had a, one of our staff who could speak several languages come across something in Portuguese from Brazil about some kind of a strange unknown berry in the Amazon um, that was only consumed locally, that no one knew, not even in Sao Paulo or anywhere else in Brazil, and said it had a lot of energy. And I wondered, what's going on there? I've got to take a look at this, just like that bit of information about the opioid receptor sites. And uh, I, I, I pursued it. I, 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 had this, I had this dream that there was something there. And we thought at first it was maybe some caffeine or something in the product that gave them energy. So we did some research on what's called methylxanthine, which you find in coffee, tea, and chocolate. Didn't find anything. I'm sitting there scratching my head, said, what could it be? Got some testing done, and suddenly we realized we had just found the richest antioxidant of any food in the world. So, acai, acai is found in this region that's in, 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 in green. Um, this is the heart 
of the floodplains, the, the tropics. It's right on the equator. And it's a phenomenal area. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of fruits and other things growing there. But everything has a very short lifespan. Like, people come to me all the time, especially now with Mona B's success. Oh, Alex, I got a fruit you just got to study. Okay? And I ask them some fundamental questions. I mean, what's the harvesting season? They say, well, about 10 days. Well, how many trees are there? Well, we figure there's about 15,000. I said, that's not enough to fill a, a can, you know, to sell in Rhode Island. So you have to look at what's practical and what's available and what has the prospect of, of helping people. And we already had gone so much into acai research that we realized this was the place to go because we know that among the millions of acres, millions of hectares of land where acai is growing, there is enough acai growing there every year and available for six to seven months. That's how long their harvest season is to literally feed the world. And that is very, very rare to find something like that. What we had to do first is we had to figure out how do we lock in, preserve all of the phytonutrients, all the uh, chemicals, everything that's in this pulp that these people have been consuming for centuries. And to do that, we worked on freeze-drying technology. This is part of what that patent is. Once we understood how to freeze-dry it, then we could lock in its antioxidant activity. And what we had initially thought was just a few hundred compounds found in nature, things like polyphenols, flavonoids, flavanols. We suddenly realized through work that's now been done at the University of Wisconsin that there are probably over 3,000 compounds. And I had never seen anything like that before because we've been studying nutraceuticals in my research institute for years. I've been there over 30 years, and we've never seen anything with over 1,200 compounds in it. We've got over 3,000 already. So there's something really special here. And my theory is that we as human beings, probably because we came from the tropics, that is our genetic origin, that we probably were exposed to these compounds, and they used to be a part of our diet seasonally. And when you start taking in Mona V with acai and all these fruits and vegetables, which include those that come from this tropical area, your body goes, oh, thank you. I'm going to pay you back by getting back your health. I think that's fundamentally, if I could put it in lay terms, what is really going on. Now, I'd also like to, and I saw Dallin, I sent him a, a, a note along with some of the management at Mona V to keep this really cool, but I have received the final draft of the manuscript. It's ready to go. So I think, Dallin, with your permission, I'd like to say that we are now studying the mechanism of action of how acai works at no less than the U.S. National Institutes of Health. And what's great about this announcement is this isn't funded by Mona V, nor Alex Schaus, nor our institute, nor any commercial entity. This was funded by the NIH, by the U.S. National Institutes of Health. And they've been doing it for quite a while. That's the secret I've had to keep. And I had no idea what they would find, but I want you to know they are so excited about what they're going to be publishing because we suddenly have found some of the exact pathways that are found in the acai fruit that are profoundly impacting our health in ways that we were totally surprised. And they will have one other announcement, which when I saw the results, I couldn't believe it because they didn't see it with resveratrol. They didn't see it with vitamin E. They didn't see it with anything they've ever studied other than the society pulp. And I want you to know that I'm going to be back at NIH next week because I'm meeting with a lot of the scientists there, the collaborators who've been doing this research. One of our members of the Scientific Advisory Board, Dr. Penny Chris Etherton from Penn State University, will be joining me because they really want to get into this research seriously because they believe that this acai pulp may have profound benefits in human health. And you are the leading company in the world offering this product.